am legit like in shock because I was part of the very first season of the Tucson Youth Poetry Slam, y'all. That was six years ago. I was a junior in high school. I'm about to graduate from the U of A. And I, just, I can't. I'm brown and I'm thriving, y'all. I'm out here. We are here. Get at me. My name is not Soldier Boy, but thank I appreciate that. Tell him. I tell him. That's my baby. I'm shook. You're dropping hands on your shook. There was a time when my family left the Sonoran Desert for Midwestern Opportunity. We moved from Tucson to Kansas when I was five and my mother and I cried all the way through New Mexico. I didn't know anything other than home. I didn't know that there were more seasons than summer and surface of the sun. I didn't know that grass could be any other color than a tinted brown. I didn't know that there wouldn't be Sonoran hot dog stands on every other corner. I didn't know that people would think hot Cheetos were actually spicy. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, like the way I didn't know I would lose my language in this new place. I remember flipping through pages of my black and white yearbook, realizing the photos of me were in a slightly darker gray than those of my peers, but that didn't faze me back then. What fazed me was that no one spoke Spanish because I was raised on bilingual tendencies like how melon was the only way I knew how to say cantaloupe and how snow cone was never quite the English equivalent of raspados. By the time I got home two years later, I couldn't remember how to pronounce my own cousin's name. Lily became Lily and laughter at my newfound accent. You came back a white girl, my brother would say as I played in sync from my stereo and it hit me. I forgot how to speak Spanish. Self-conscious, I spent countless nights awake with the moon attempting to roll my R's. I hit the roof of my mouth with such force that my tongue became numb, but the feeling was familiar. I didn't want to lose this language. When heavy Sonoran traffic hits my retail job, guests find solidarity in my brownness. Mija, disculpa, can you help me? I reply, entiendo más que lo puedo hablar, I'm sorry. I'm sorry because I can't speak my mother's tongue or make out the sounds of my mother's tongue when she speaks in the language I should know. But don't blame her. It is not her fault that standard English meant broken Spanish wouldn't be enough. That standard English didn't mean Spanglish that standard English meant proper, and that proper wasn't Mexican. You're brown, and you can't speak Spanish. Well, you must not be a real Mexican, but you speak English, but you're brown, so you must not be a real American. Trapped in an ironic cycle, questioning my identity as brown girl who couldn't howl with the rest of the pack, but I couldn't let that stop me. While in Kansas, I did what Dorothy would do, and I clicked my heels three times because there was no place like home, and home meant Tucson, and Tucson meant lenguaje. It's been 12 years since coming back, and I still can't speak to my nana at the fullest extent. I still have trouble tracing my steps backwards to find the voice that exists in places only memories can find. With Cuervo, remember, reminder, that our language is a map that they tried to bury with the history that never went in the books. But this map, it's a treasure, precious and valuable. Follow it closely and you will always be able to return home.